Sin. Hi. Hi. It's your penultimate appearance on the podcast. The Toogies Take podcast before leaving for Finland's. Yes. How are you? I'm doing great. Very excited um, <laughs> for multiple reasons, but mostly because I'm so, so close to going back to the promised land. And it's going to be one of the best months of my life. I know that. <sighs> I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm happy for both of us. <laughs> yeah. so I'll be there. What about a, a week, week after or so, and uh, there for a week as well, compared to you being there for a month. And everybody, I figured we'd start the show off differently on a happy note, just because. Not because we have a negative story to talk about today, but damn it, there are just sometimes you like to see your friends happy, and I know how excited Sin is. And we don't have that much hockey to talk about today. <laughs> Let's yeah. be honest, not much has gone down in the past few days, a couple of big talking points, and that's about it. So damn it, if I can say, hey, friendos, how are you? And then we get to answer a bunch of random questions again, then dang it, that's what we're going to do. Which is why I say, Endo Mills, how are you? Pretty good. I uh, just chalked off the uh, the Tukey penultimate uh, checklist that I have here. Yeah. And uh, so far, we're on pace for one penultimate uh, a day. So there you go. It's a uh, Tukey's Take podcast bingo, um, which I mean, penultimate isn't quite the free space. Mm -mm. Um, you have Endo wearing a Leafs hat, but saying, I don't give a fuck about the Leafs. That's one of the spots for sure. Cool hat. Let's be real. Cool hat. It, it, is, a, it is a sick hat. Um, yeah. We have Sin saying, fuck the Vegas Golden Knights, or at least alluding towards it. That's up there. Uh, the free yeah. space is 2015. The draft. That's the free space. <laughs> <laughs> for the Bruins? How is that not the free space? I don't know. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Mentioning mm. Finland is is got to be close to that. Like soda, mm. soda's um, getting there too. Minnesota might be up there too. I want I want to know from everyone who watches, listens, our most common referred to things, most said words. If we were to have the Tukey's Take podcast bingo game, what would the what would the things be? on that list because uh, we've had the same thing for me on the YouTube side of things, definitely on the Twitch side of things, um, <laughs> mostly including soul crushing franchise mode depression in terms of having super teams consistently lose. It's, it's our favorite thing, but yeah, let us know. Oh goodness. Shall we get into some viewer questions or I don't know. Where do you guys want to take this show? It's a bit of a, a bit of a, I don't want to say directionless, but we have a, a you know a looser guideline to follow today with not as much to talk about. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm just, uh... yeah, we could do viewer questions. I just, I just want to talk about Finland and, and be in Finland right now and <laughs> see my girlfriend. It's, uh... yeah. Yeah, he's in love land right now. Sin is just uh, hard eyes. Yeah, you, don't, you don't understand how... how uh... Yeah. You don't understand. I need this. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what no cussy does for to a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a throwback to a previous episode, kids. That is. It is indeed. Sin just swimming and swimming. And also, <laughs> and also, show me Bob and Vagine. <laughs> Harvey Benjamin. <laughs> Do milk. <laughs> oh man oh, then fuck. you'll be happy to know um because <laughs> i mean you mentioned her name on a prior episode um and for some reason today <laughs> i made the connection of the early family guy episode where peter puts on the play of the king and i <laughs> <laughs> anna's here <laughs> anna rules because she can't <laughs> That guy's in her jewels. Oh, God. oh, man. And there you go. That's one for the bingo card. Sin and I laugh about an old family guy reference. That's definitely go. on the list, 100%. Uh, but speaking of uh, bad guys and their jewels, this podcast, as always, is brought to you by our lovely friends at Manscaped. Oh, fuck, man. Come That's on. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, one of the best segues into an ad read ever. Please continue. <laughs> Oh, God. If you want to be a winner like Anna and her atomic ray gun, uh, you can go to manscaped.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
fucking stupid. You can go to manscaped.com and use the code Tugi. That's T-O-U-G-I-E for 20% off your order and free shipping. That is code Tugi at manscaped.com. The pinnacle, the peak, the best you can get in the world of male grooming, men's grooming. But I still say it goes for everybody. Yes, they do have the best tools for the job, no matter the job. Yeah, as fuck I always the pink say, tax. that's what yeah, I say. Legit. Fuck the pink tax. Use use manscaped stuff. Pretty much anything off. that manscaped has, besides maybe the beard kit, it can be used for the women. I've seen I some women with beards. I mean, it made me confused and made me rethink a couple things. But I've seen women with beards. Yeah, it can be done. We don't yeah. discriminate. We don't yeah. look your best, no matter what. That's what it's all about. Summer coming up. I'm dying here because of the heat already. But damn it, you know I hit the beach. I'm gonna be looking damn good. Oh man! And, and I, I went outside. I went outside for the first time. Take me time. to the beach. Eat. Let's go get away. <laughs> <laughs> Stay. I have to go on the say. Tiggy, your time. You go, go, go. <laughs> Manscaped.com. Code Tiggy. Thank you, the Manscaped. For continuing to sponsor the show for some reason that I will never truly understand. And if you want to sponsor this podcast, well, you can. Toogie at Toogie.live. Do what you got to do. Gentlemen, let's get to some viewer questions here, shall we? It's one that we have definitely answered before, but I'm willing to bring it back. One, because, oh my God, it's almost June. And two, because for whatever reason, um, my local preferred grocery store has had like a week and a half long sale on Ben and Jerry's ice cream. So ice cream has been at the forefront of my thoughts on more than one occasion over the oh. past week and a half. Well, we know ice cream uh, is a big thing summer in Finland as well. So Jesus Christ, boys. <laughs> Do, are we going to get funding from the government of Finland? Like, Dude, we point, should like... be elected to the board of tourism. Yeah, <laughs> like we really should. That's what if when I ever create a TikTok, it's just going to be out how good living in Finland is. Honestly, yeah. Once you're over there, like screw it. That's what you should do. Is just yeah. be Swami the only sin. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking genius, Endo. Head there of you marketing. go. <laughs> Those are my five words for the day for the podcast. Thank you, Endo. Head of marketing until he's late on assignments, and then. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> fired. Just he, kidding. He try. He tries hard though. Loves the game. Um, <laughs> art, art for 60 <laughs> off the charts <laughs> I love how much Come art for Canadian, 60 good. <sighs> God, Don Cherry impressions on the list by the way oh yeah oh, that bingo game. Dude, someone's already <laughs> hit bingo by this point oh no kidding oh man god damn but no you should you should do that I mean whether or not it's you know once you hopefully get to move there or even on this trip, like, I don't care if it's like, hey, go back to some of the places you've already been to just showcase them off or just be like, hey, I went to this. Well, honestly, when we go out to eat at the greatest Chinese restaurant on Earth, Kashin, on Lautasari, <laughs> mm-hmm. just be like, hey, this place is dope. Essentially do a review on TikTok and just be like, eat here, do it, uh, because people should. That place yes. is fucking delicious. Yeah. <laughs> How many, realistically, how many times have you eaten there? It's double digits at this point, it, or it's yeah, close. It's 10 at least. Like, <laughs> really? I'm at whole, five or six, and I've yeah, spent like, less time there. <laughs> yeah, no, by this point, it legit has to be 10. Like, we've gone multiple times together or with Kenu or a big group. Like, that's been at yep. least three or four times. Me and you have gone there a couple other times separately. Yep. Yeah, and I've been a few times legitimately on my own. Like, just go there. I'm like, God. oh, fuck, I'm hungry. I'm going to go all the way to Laut the Saudi because guess what? Public transportation is amazing. And I just take 30 <laughs> minutes to get over there chilling on the bus and eat the best Kung Pao chicken known to man. You guys are giving me FOMO, like massive FOMO. And it's uh, like the most, it's, it's like this. super expensive FOMO, too. Because the go there yeah, and back, it's this like, year one especially, grand. plane tickets suck. But yeah. last last year, actually this winter, my plane ticket was so cheap compared. Mine like, was damn cheap too. Seven fifty round trip in the winter. I mean, it is the winter, but this still U.S. too. That's pretty decent. Like That's again, really it, good for international. <laughs> it's in the winter, but honestly, as again, someone who lives in Maine and you're Canadian, you will be able to know. Like, okay, winters here can be fucking brutal. 
Like mm-hmm. Toronto, Ontario, obviously in general, like you guys are fucked up by the lake. Yeah. You know, lake effect snow and all that shit can just be so unpredictable. Here it's one second it's below freezing, the next day it's 45. So your you know, your body just doesn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. The one of the beautiful parts as we again conduct our favorite segment, Bureau of Tourism for Finland. Um <laughs> I think Bureau of Tourism might be the episode title. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's just consistent over there. Yes. It'll snow practically every day, at least a little bit, but it'll be a consistent temperature. So it's like, cool. You just dress the same way every day, and who cares? It's fine. Yep. Um, it was great, honestly. And uh, yeah, Fiance24 slipped on the uh, on the ice about three times <laughs> when Oof. we were there in February because she didn't have the right footwear. So make sure you pack boots. Don't be like, oh, but if I if I pack boots, I won't have room for the other things. Pack the boots or wear them on the plane. Fuck your comfort. You're going to be happy that you didn't bust ass yeah. in a foreign country. And make uh, sure your boots are in good quality and your sole doesn't start falling off midway through your trip. So you have to go buy super glue at a Lidl and fucking <laughs> glue your sole back. <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing. God, we. Uh, I just want to go had- to Lidl. That's all I want to do in Finland. Just go to Dude, Lidl. you will love it because you like pizza and you can get a box of two frozen pizzas for four euro 50 cents. I'm sold. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Fuck it. Um, all you need. Once, they, once they figure out my, my condo shit, I'm definitely going to save up some more money to go to Finland for a week. Fuck it. Why not? Well, what you guys are going to do another? You guys are going back again probably for the winter for casting. So perhaps we will see. Hopefully. Yeah. There's I mean, a lot I, of stuff certainly, in the air. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be against it, but yeah, well, you never Sid will know. will be there. I'll just stay in his. Yeah, he'll just be there permanently. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just stay in his trash bin. It's fine. Oh God, but yeah, no. I mean, who who knows? I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things you just never know for sure. Like for me, I'm just like, hey, like I I treated the February trip like this too. I'm like, man, just enjoy the shit out of this because you don't know if it'll be the last time you're over there. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm viewing this trip very much the same way as like yeah. I just I'm excited to get over there and. Obviously, you know, we'll be covering the uh, ECL Elite Division finals on sportsgamer.gg. And um, aside from that, yeah, it's just it's that extra bit of downtime that is so goddamn fun. So anyway, the first viewer question was from RG Dust. Favorite (laughs) ice cream and ice cream topic? Ben and Jerry's Funky Monkey? Dude, anything fucking Ben. Is there a bad Ben and Jerry's flavor? Come on. My favorite is... Oh no! Keep going, Endo. Sorry. The Tonight Show with uh, the t- the Tonight Dough. Okay, so I, I don't, I, I don't, I like that flavor, but I don't like that flavor. There was a thread on Twitter that was like, "Has Jimmy Fallon done anything good at all for the for the face of humanity?" And it's just his fucking ice cream thing. <laughs> <laughs> or that one time he did blackface on SNL. It's like, Oof. all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like that flavor, though. You know, not gonna lie. It was. It was I've, I've had it recently. Actually, it's okay. It's not bad. What is, uh, what is sen- that fucking Celtic swirl that you do? You know, oh, dude, a full court pretz. <laughs> it's a stupid name. Oh. oh, it's the best goddamn ice cream on the planet, though. It, like, I oh, was man. not the type to be like, yeah, pretzel ice cream. But dude, let me tell you. Full court pretz, as described, and I don't even care. More free advertisement. Gifford's ice cream, baby. Vanilla ice cream with chocolate coated pretzel balls, chocolate caramel cups, which is basically peanut butter cups, and delicious caramel ripples. It's 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 sex for the mouth. It's <laughs> it's the best. It's gonna blow job. It's gonna blow job. Oh, this ice uh, cream is just straight blowing me, dude. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> so you got the scoops. Yeah, if we're talking about Ben and Jerry's, my favorite's definitely woke cookie dough. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh. the ice cream rainbow f- rainbow color? Yes. Yeah. Is it? No, I don't know. Oh, <sighs> God. <laughs> Oh, oh god. god. Uh yeah, favorite ice cream. Sold ex- hold on, sold exclusively at Target. Yeah. Um, anyway, continue. <laughs> favorite ice cream. If it's like just flavors of ice cream, it's um <clears throat> cookie dough, cookies and cream. I like to keep it pretty simple. I don't like to go crazy with it. But if like there's like an ice cream bar, I got a shout out Magnum. 
double caramel billionaire ice cream bar. I wear those. Flawless. That's great. And no, if you have to advertise it, you may be overselling yourself. Just saying. Uh, but <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> Got these yes. condoms for my magnum dong. Yeah, I got, the, I got these extra large my condoms my, for my magnum dong. Magnum dong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, <sighs> this episode's crazy. It's, yep, and this is exactly what I thought it would be, to be honest. So you know what? No regrets whatsoever. Uh, from Bud Knight, complete right turn here. Different topic. What's the best video game franchise in each of your respective opinions? Ooh. Could be any genre. So in your opinion, I know it's a, it's a loaded question, but in your opinion, we'll, we'll rephrase it as this. The aliens come to earth. You got to propose, Hey, here's the best video game franchise that you can, that you can play to save earth. Hmm. What is that video game franchise where you're just like, here you go, please don't murder us all. Halo, but you stop them before they get to Halo 4. They say, what's this for? That doesn't exist. Don't worry about it. I thought it. you were going to say oh, Halo from the perspective of the aliens. Yeah, it's just going to be yeah. like, you only you only let them play the mission as, missions as the Arbiter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So just Halo 2. <laughs> only, Keith, only Keith David can save us. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Mm. Like that's such a it has so many memories for me. But fuck, oh my god, the fucking jump chief jump mission, Jesus Christ! <laughs> At the end, me and my cousins were just freaking out. Like jump chief jump, we're like ah! It's like five of us <laughs> just screaming over top of each other. The best, man. Okay, this is hard. God. Because I it love is. so many good series, and it's I love them for different reasons, and they fulfill different desires of my of what I want out of uh, gaming experiences. But like honestly, for me, I guess I have to I have to cut it down to playing time. I, I guess, but then again, I've probably played the Halo games a shit ton amount too. But mm -hmm. <sighs> Total War, I guess, just because I played the Total War Warhammer so much, I played a lot of Medieval too, but mostly, yeah. That's I guess I have to go with that, man. I got two over two thousand hours in Total War Warhammer two and five hundred plus in the third one now. <laughs> like <laughs> clearly, I love them. Uh, now, obviously, there are like the big obvious answers, but again, it's our personal opinion, so it's not like oh, well, Mario is the best selling character of all time, or yeah, yeah, fucking Pokemon, COD. Give them Auto. Undertale. Be, be like <laughs> Matt Pat. Give them Undertale. Like give the Pope. <laughs> Give the Pope Undertale. <laughs> oh, God. I gave the Pope Undertale, and he really liked it. He's like, I sent the video like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my Italian. I sent the video like this. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I don't know, man. I knew it would God. be a show like this, though, which is great. God. Um,. Fuck, I, I'm so bad with questions, the favorites of all time. I hate that. Questions. I, I, yeah, like it's like being asked what's your favorite song of all time or favorite band of all time. Like That's so tough right. because I have different ones for different reasons. They, they all hit me different. <sighs> to rephrase it, is there a video game? What's the top video game, video game series, whatever, that you wish you could play again for the first time? Ooh. Ooh. Because that might help. Like the optics looking at it from that perspective. Halo. Might be better. That that yeah. has to be Halo then. Because goddamn the first time I played that game, played through Pillar of Autumn and then got to that the Halo level where you have to go around and rescue all the drop pods holding off in different areas. That changed gaming for me. Like the mm. graphics blew me away. And that's when I switched from PlayStation to Xbox, all because of Halo. That's a story for a lot of people. Yeah, shame they dropped the they dropped the ball recently. Holy, yeah. Uh, yeah. Bungie <clears throat> just didn't stop making the games. I mean, three four three made some good maps and stuff, but they they weren't Bungie. Hmm. Yeah, just different directions for for all throughout Halo uh, Infinite. Just yeah, I never even played it. 
That's how a disconnect that I am now from Halo. I mean, played it like one or two times. I think once yeah. it was with Endo, and then once it was with my my buddy Dave that we've played Isha with before. Like, and like if I'm gonna it. one v if I'm gonna play Halo and like one v one someone, it's gonna be Halo Three, just because mm-hmm. that to me is what Halo is. Fuck the sprint button. You don't need it. Fuck loadouts. You don't need it. It's about a guy who can use fucking anything. Like yeah. that's what that's what Halo Three was so good with. Like it 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 separated itself from all other shooters. It was the first like first person shooter that fucking took over as this amazing multiplayer experience. We yeah, like, talked about me being a, a nerd for Roman shit. Um, I would go with the the Ezio storylines worth the games mm-hmm. in Assassin's Creed to just explore that again. You know, I played yeah, that's a good AC two. And just Brilliant, that dude. it was everything I ever wanted to just be able to like explore around Rome. And it's like, oh, hey, there's a hidden temple in the Colosseum. Like, that was in, that was in Brotherhood. But nerd yeah. boner to the max. Yeah. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, dude. Like, that's a good one, too. Like the first time playing Assassin's Creed, too, because Assassin's Creed one was good. But I really feel like that was a beta in a sense. Mm. It was a little too repetitive. Assassin's Creed 2 was really the birth of that franchise for me because it just it, it branched out from you have to do the same thing to assassinate all these targets and made everything more unique, added in all those collectibles and stuff too. Yeah, dude, like finding those ancient assassin's tubes to get to Altair's armor that you had underneath Monte Regioni. Like that that's amazing. Yeah, I still have been... not played. Sorry, Ando, I keep cutting you off. I oh, still haven't yeah, played you. the I still haven't played the first Assassin's Creed. I still haven't fucking played Black Flag either. I've been meaning to play that for oh, like 10 oh, years now. Dude, okay, you gotta play Black Flag. Play Black Flag. Do not think of it as an Assassin's Creed game. That's what I've always said. So I started yep. it like seven, eight years ago. I started it, but I think I started it too soon after playing another long story game. And I'm like, ah, I'm just not in the mood yet to fully dive into it. And since then, I just I haven't gone back yet. It's a pirate you game. You have to play it. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the best pirate game. It's so much fun. Just taking out ships and like it's it's great. It's such a good game. Like it's Oliver. it was it was also the moment when Ubisoft realized they could put other stuff with other IPs. And then you have hmm. like now with like Valhalla Origins, the new stuff. It's I, 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 I don't like the new Assassin's Creed games because to me, they're not Assassin's Creed. It's just other games slapped on with another IP. That's what it feels like to me, at least. I think that's what it feels like to a lot of people, though, in fairness. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Loaded, loaded question, but hopefully we uh, we made it through. Yeah, my answer, Ratchet and Clank, the entire <laughs> series. Mm. Ratchet and Clank. I, I, you know, again, something else I never played. I preferred something like Jack and Daxter over Ratchet and Clank. God, that one's good too. God damn it! Yeah, it just gets no fucking love whatsoever for some reason. I played the fuck out of Jack X Combat Racing. I know everyone hated that game, but I liked that game a lot. I, mm, I want to want to play that game. I'm gonna go download it right now because I have a copy, but it's not working. Do it. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, uh, yeah. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Well, we ended up with another one of these questions from Scroopy Noopers. We had the, uh, hey, if you could have someone lead an army, <laughs> if you could command a military force during any period or region in human history, mm. what would you pick? <sighs> so you are a military commander, but what is the time period, the region, so on and so forth? Ah. <sighs> It is not. It is November second, nineteen thirty-two. I am in Australia, fighting the emu wars. <laughs> You're commanding the I emus am the, there. I am joining I am the, the war on commander. emus on the side of the emus. <laughs> Those birds will build a statue for me when I'm done. <laughs> I'm riding one into the sunset. Just go. <laughs> I'm just imagining Endo riding an emu because you can. Oh wait, you can ride ostriches. I don't know if you can ride emus, but yeah. I have have enough emus together so I could just ride them together, like on a like on a chariot, just going through. (laughs) Yeah, a chariot. That's brutal. It's Ben Hur, but with just emus. (laughs) 
Shout out to the first Shout- ever reference of Ben Hur on the podcast. No, I'm, I'm actually shocked the man has seen that movie. I know. I know, <laughs> I know oh, some things. Holy Apparently. shit! Like my mom, my mom used to rave about that movie. And oh made me God. watch it once. It is a great movie, but holy shit, mm-hmm. Endo making a Ben Hur reference is the last thing I expected. That's definitely not on any bingo cards anywhere. <laughs> Did you know they released an Xbox <gasps> game for that, like on the an Xbox One, and it was absolutely dog shit. It was just a free game game. Uh, what was it? It was for the movie that came out, but the gameplay was like so bad. It was like a PS2 title, like on there. I'm terrible. shocked Ben Hur the video game wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh, it's like the oh, fucking fuck. Star Wars Pod Racer game. Of course, it wasn't. Which, by the way, <laughs> ripped off of Ben Hur, basically. Yeah, <laughs> this is Pod Racing. <laughs> God. I will say though, I will say, um, in terms of like that type of aesthetic, right? Like we talked about um, Assassin's Creed Two and stuff like that. There was a game that kind of took that, the whole idea of like the chariot racing combat. Um, There was a game called uh, Shadow of Rome on the PS2 Hmm. where you played a gladiator. And it was a Capcom game, so it almost had the combat feeling of what eventually was used for like Dead Rising. Hmm. And you're just making these monstrosities of these weapons and just butchering. everything in front of you and then they juxtaposed it with stealth missions with like this little bitch character so you had gladiator mowing down people and then stealth missions with a little bitch because that was the political intrigue portion of it um god damn it i need to go back and play that game people need to check that out i don't know what it is that uh, the one memory i have that really stands out is i must have been 11, 12 years old. And look, my parents were cool. They were just like, look, if you swear, whatever, know when and where to do it. Be fucking responsible. Video game wise, we'll let you play some stuff. If we start noticing changes in you and you start we're yep, taking the yep. shit away, like be fucking responsible was the lesson they told me. But it was still like I was 10, 11 years old and my grandmother came to visit. <laughs> and they got there earlier than expected and she's like what are you playing I'm just fucking turn the TV off I'm like I can't let my I, I can't let my grandmother know I'm playing this bloody fucking butchering yeah. people <laughs> coliseum video game oh my god just I don't know why that stands out but hey there you go um, oh man yeah anybody else they, have any games that stand out in your childhood completely too many to count jesus There's so oh, many man. yeah like i it would be a, such a long list we'd be talking about this for way too long I but another, some would say we already have yeah <laughs> and, yeah another game i would like other games i wish i could play for the first time again pokemon go um mm. <laughs> and during go during that like first couple months that fucking that game was out was just some of the most beautiful experiences of my life just yeah, talking to random people in a bunch of places having this one thing to connect you and getting to know this person for a brief amount of time, literally teaming up with strangers to go fucking Pokemon hunting. It was like you were in the game. It was a piece of your childhood that you wanted to experience was right there. And then, yeah, yeah, I it died that, out because everyone was like, it died out because everyone was like, oh, it's a health hazard or whatever. Too many people are congregating up together. It's like, we're just going outside. Like, this is what you want. You want people to go no, outside they don't want, more often. I don't want that. They just want to piss and moan about things. Uh, <laughs> That's true. We're very, we're very good at that as a people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's our favorite thing to do. And World of Warcraft is another one. Like, dude, getting to play WoW Classic again was just beautiful. And then, of course, they just kept it going. And yeah. Anyway. Did we answer the question <sighs> at all? Yeah. Didn't we? Oh, wait. Military force. Fuck. I forgot we were on that question. <laughs> I don't even get to what we're talking about. Oh, because you mentioned Roman gladiators and shit. Or yeah, like Ben Hur. Yeah, ben, <laughs> Endo's fault. He's he did the Ben Hur reference. Oh my god, um, this is tough. Like, I would probably want to command Romans because, dude, they're like they're they're beast mode. Like they yeah. have brilliant strategy, incredible things. Anything with a shield wall, I would have loved to do. Romans had that in their. Uh, uh, Testudos, thank you uh, for reminding myself. 
of what it was called. Thanks, me. Yeah, You're thanks welcome, me. me. Yeah. Um, I you, love all that you. kind of stuff and like cool, interesting tactics and things like that. Um, but also defending a uh, late medieval period like Castle would be dope. Because I yeah, love just... I love sieges and like castle assault type stuff, defending, holding the line. That's always been a big thing of mine. I love that. Like you're going to inherently lean towards like, OK, give me this force, though, at like the peak of its abilities. Yeah, of course. You know, like you want to have fun with it. Like, I don't want to be no fucking underdog. No, Fuck give, <laughs> give me 1945 f- fucked in Berlin Wehrmacht when they're picking up old 60 year old guys and prepubescent kids to fight for them. And got shit kicked by the commies. This is all. This is all true. <laughs> <laughs> this happened. We will move on. Holy shit! It's another history question from Nighthawk. <laughs> Saying you and I, especially you, from the last episode, like we we got the ball rolling on this. I'm, clearly, I'm creaming my pants right now. Let's go. <laughs> from Nighthawk. What is one otherwise obscure historical fact that you find fascinating? Mm. The said note he said one. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Called out, man. All right. Well, someone else starts uh, so I can God. Yeah. I mean Fuck. It's just it's such a broad question. You know? God damn it. I fucking uh, I'm f- <laughs> Endo Mills, you got anything? Mr. Ben Hur himself. <laughs> um, I have no idea. What's an obscure fact? Um, <laughs> you got any facts? I, I know Charles one. I'll, I'll say it. I will say it. Um, we've we've known the Earth is round to way for much much longer than is actually believed. There were studies done, especially in uh, the Middle East, by mm. I forget the name of the man now, but essentially there's these two. Um, monuments, pillar type things. I forget what they're called now, but uh, one king decided to spend a lot of money having someone like measure where the shadow was at this at. Anyway, he basically conducted this fucking experiment like s- way before the turn. I can't remember the year of it now. God damn. Why can't I even remember names? But basically the only reason why it took so long for there to be like in the West acceptance over uh the earth is actually round was due to the church the catholic church in particular who also had a thing against glasses and thought those were of the devil so uh yeah. <laughs> but yeah um oh it's gonna piss me off that i cannot remember this guy's name i want to say he was like persian or turkish or but i'm just gonna make well, a i mean you gotta think of like you know the ottoman empire before they uh you know decided to get all genocidal yeah. Um, you know, did contribute a fair amount. Uh, you know, and hey, a lot of that information as well was, you know, like you said, it gets pushed down, or at least in certain parts of the world, they're like, Oh, hey, did you hear about this? And it's like, No, you didn't, because we're keeping the status quo. Fuck you. Yeah. Um God. Um, just to piss off, I don't even think it would piss people off. Um, uh, but given the man has a statue in Boston. Shout out to Paul Revere, who never fucking shouted anything. It's a fucking quiet operation. You really think he's going to sit there and yell, the fucking British are coming. I hope the British didn't hear me. Like, And it also wasn't just him. Like, you can, yes. One man couldn't do all that shit. Are you kidding me? Right. There were thousands of, there were probably tens of messengers being sent well, out. Am- dozens. Like, fucking Sam Fisher and Splinter Cell. I'm going to get you. Like, no, it's it's, it's, it's kind of counterproductive, don't you fucking think? Oh, man. Oh, fuck. That's what it was. Anyway. Another game wanted to re experience Splinter Cell. <laughs> 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 I missed that, man. Yeah, I got nothing oh, for God. random facts. I just threw a lifeline out to a, a friend of mine who's a big history buff, so she's going to give me something, the most random fact she knows, randomly throughout the podcast. Just be Three like, oh, hours from now know on that, Twitter. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we'll post a, a fucking history fact and people will be like, what the fuck? Because they haven't heard the podcast yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's like, God. He's just My- going to be in Twitter. Greeks butt fucked each other. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's not even, you know? that's not even a secret. <laughs> Did you know the Greeks were woke? <laughs> <laughs> That's going to piss all the fucking fascists off. Uh, Greek statues as profile pics. Tar- I wonder why they Target love was invented in fucking- Greece. <laughs> uh, it's every single one of them. Wait, wait till they find out fucking America ripped all their political building architecture off of the Greeks. They're going to be true. pissed. <laughs> and fun. their entire <laughs> political system. <laughs> yeah. Speaking speaking of how fucked up our lovely country is, sin, uh, the highest recommendation I have for obscure political facts, or not even political facts, just historical facts, uh, read one of the greatest books ever written that should be mandatory reading in every uh, high school class in the United States. That the being lies, oh. my, lies My Teacher Told Me. Yep. Uh, oh. Which will... Uh, it you, There's a good amount that you might have already known. There's probably a lot in there that you didn't know. And uh, I read that book in high school. I read it again recently. Um, yeah, read it. Read it. You uh, owe it to yourself. You do. I, I gifted uh, that book to my stepmom, who was a teacher for once. Uh, now what I look back at is maybe passive aggressive, but fuck her. She deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm just trying to be nice. And <laughs> she's just I like, was. I was just fuck. like, oh, I thought you might like I, like legitimately. I was like, oh, you could like this. You know, you're the history teacher. And then, like, looking back, I'm like, oh, I wonder if she took that as passive aggressive, but she was a bitch to me anyway. So, okay. <laughs> I hope she did. Hope she lost sleep. Oh, God. Um, also, the, the second part was if you had to choose one historical site to visit while on vacation, which again is a fucking loaded one. Um, yeah. Mentioned uh, the Vasa Museum in Stockholm for himself, amongst uh, other places as well, throughout Italy. <laughs> um, Jesus. I mean, I've already mentioned the Coliseum. Like, I but the problem I have with that is it's too touristy at this yeah. point. It's just too touristy. So, like, okay, more Finland stories, right? Um, Sin and I have both visited a place. I got to go this past February uh, with my fiance, uh, a place known as Rock Church in Helsinki, which is literally just a church built into like the side of a rocky hillside. By the way, coincidentally, that's where Anna has her samba dance practices. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's amazing. Like there's so much so, that goes on. Are in we there. are we all going to samba when we're over there? Oh <laughs> uh, well, you're gonna miss it, unfortunately. Their parade is on June tenth. But that's why it I'm going as early as I want. I didn't want to miss her get to see her do her big event for the whole year. Oh, isn't um, that cute? It yes, is. it is. Zendo <laughs> go suck it. I will I adorable. will go suck it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this place is amazing, and it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if people would necessarily go straight to Finland or to Helsinki to see it specifically, but if you're there, you should go see it, and it's not overly busy. At least it wasn't then. Uh, it might be worse in the summer, but it was one of those locations where no. it's like, cool, I can go here. Nothing is overly busy there. <laughs> it's not It's not crowded. Like You know that's not going to be like fucking merchandise stands, hawking shit. Like, it's just, I mean, they have a little gift shop if you want to, but it's not as, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but as I imagine, like, the Coliseum or the Leaning Tower of Pisa, it's like, they're just too fucking touristy nowadays. Yeah. yeah. Um, God, so uh, one historical site I'd like to visit, I would like to go to Anfield, home of Liverpool Football Club, because, damn it, <laughs> they're beyond historic to me. Even if we're playing in the Europa League this this upcoming season. And by we, I mean them, because I'm not a part of the team. And I hate when people do that, but I just did it myself. Uh, I don't have an answer to this. Jesus, fuck. How do you pick one spot? Yeah, Damn these it. questions suck. They're making us pick one thing when that's never easy. <sighs> they're, they're too broad of questions on you know some occasions. And that can be can be difficult, everybody. Yeah, so uh, when I was in Germany, I saw like, so many fucking different castles, um, which was the thrill for me, <sighs> um, including Neuschwanstein, which, by the way, is not a castle by definition, but people fuck like to you, call Jeremy. it a castle. <laughs> yeah, no, fuck the f- the gay the gay dude who lived there. <laughs> um, straight up, sure. if you saw it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. You got an answer for this one. <laughs> I just don't like have an answer. I've I've been fortunate enough you know? to go to so many cool places, and I'm like, I don't know where I would want to go. I'm trying to think of like, 
You know what? I want to see Stonehenge. Yeah. Because you know why? I, I just have a question that I need answered. <laughs> Who the fuck builds a Stonehenge? <laughs> That's on the bingo the- card, Sin singing. <gasps> oh. That is on the card. <laughs> Um, I would like to go to the pyramids in Egypt so I can eat at the Kentucky Fried Chicken next to it. Ew, is that a thing? Oh, that's a thing. Oh, that's yeah. Depressing. No, they have a KFC and they have an out outside the little patio area. We can go and look at the look at the pyramids oh. while eating KFC in Egypt. That's so depressing. It's horrifying, isn't it? Fuck. And no, you got an answer for this? Sex Machine Museum in Prague. There you go. Uh, so to talk about some hockey, thank you, everybody, for your questions. Um, again, we mentioned we don't have too much to talk about. We will kick things off, though, with uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, who are sorry, who are in the mud, as uh, apparently both in the NBA and the NHL, green teams in the conference finals are making a comeback. Uh, the Boston Celtics forced Game 7 against Miami, and it certainly looks like Dallas heading home for Game 6 could very well get it done. Uh, they won Game 5, 4-2. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights had to lead twice in the game, couldn't hold it, and then Ty Delandria scored two goals in less than two minutes in the middle of the third period. Uh, despite Ryan Suter's best efforts to throw the game away for Dallas, the Stars win it, and uh, Vegas... Big. You know what's bad when the quote going around from Bruce Cassidy is we have 24 giveaways. I'm not sure you're beating the Arizona Coyotes in January with 24 giveaways, which is a terrible sign when you know you're having to fucking throw strays at the Coyotes to elaborate how bad you've been. That shit might be fucked, Bruce. Yeah. Uh, and Jamie Benton's coming back for game six. The Jamie Guillotine Ben ready to go for the next one. Sit him. Um, <laughs> Holy shit, game seven's but I mean fuck. <laughs> like Vegas, you gotta gotta wake up a little bit here. Hey, this is they have a history of this. We can 100 percent say that at this point. They have a history of blowing series and blowing big series leads as well. Blowing leads in general, let's be honest. Just blowing it. Everyone everyone likes to focus on the Game 7 Pavelski payback of the Sharks, and they did rightfully so, but you can't forget that the Sharks were down in that series three games to one and forced the mm. Game 7. <laughs> one of them on the back of a terrific Martin Jones performance where we won 2-1 to one in overtime where we had no business winning. Martin Jones playoff wizard. Yeah. Except for, you know, all Except the for times. All the other he games. Wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> all 2016 the other in that one game in particular. <laughs> oh, God. But the memories, that's what's important. Yeah. Uh, so Maybe the honestly, real Martin Jones is the memories along the way. <laughs> <laughs> the real Martin Joel. The real Martin Jones are the goals Joe Pavelski scored to give us hope. Yes. Those are the real Martin Jones performances. Yeah. Uh, the Florida Panthers are just chilling. It's going to be a week, a week and a half in between games for them, which uh, obviously that'll be a big talking point heading into the Stanley Cup final whenever we know who they're going to be playing. I believe it is confirmed either way. Uh, It will begin on Saturday, the 3rd, June 3rd already. I, I don't know. Like, are we on our next show? Because game six is tonight. Mm-hmm. Recording Monday the 29th. Game seven is on Wednesday. Our next show is Thursday. Yep. By that Thursday, are we talking about how Vegas won game six and ended the series, or are we talking about the game seven the night before? Well, game seven would have been over by then on Thursday. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is are we talking oh. about game seven? Wednesday, because we'll be doing the show on Thursday. Do we think this is going seven? I hope it does. Vegas blew it. They had home ice for game five. Yeah, It's going back home. Dallas has all the momentum. All the I popcorn. Ho- yes. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's, st- it's still Vegas. They're still a good team. And it's still, this is a historical comeback you need to mount. There's only been four other teams to do it. 
Mm. But I want this to happen so bad. I'm trying to manifest it into existence because number one, history being made is great. Number two, Pavelski having a chance at a cup is great. Number three, mm. lol, it's fucking Vegas. Please let this happen to them. Because at that point, they have nothing against the Sharks anymore. They can't say that we've choked worse than them. We've won more games in the Stanley Cup finals than they have. Like, <laughs> mm. Speaking of which, I did see one uh, couple – one Twitter user in particular call Vegas a dynasty because they've made it to the conference finals a lot. Yes, yes, yes. Can we just agree that that organization needs to be needs to have their fucking little britches pulled down and spanked? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, <laughs> you spanked that ass less. <laughs> Say hello to my newest Twitch follower. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what all my follow alerts need to be is just sin quotes uh just, it's consistent gold uh endo any thoughts about this series one way or another do you think it's going seven do you give a shit at all i don't mind if you don't personally like hey you do you i mean it, it'd, it'd be nice for dallas to go back to a Stanley cup final again you know i mean mm. they were just recently there when colorado won their first no Wait, no, they played Colorado. I know how divisions work. They played the game. They played Tampa. Thing. They played Tampa. Yeah, they yeah. played Tampa. I know how math works. Okay, leave me alone. Don't bad me. I'll bring up Ben Hur again. I, I see. I know things. I know things. Um, I know the best things. I, I know the best things. Um. Yeah, I, I would like to see a game seven. If we're gonna get it, I don't know. I mean, we're gonna find out in the first. Like ten minutes, if, if we're gonna get a game seven or not. Mm-hmm. If Ottinger is on his game, if he's even playing, like are they gonna go with Wedgwood because Wedgwood played pretty decent. I so, just want Wedgwood to get a chance. I I just want that guy to get a chance. Okay, like Vukali, just just give them a chance. So, spoiler alert here. In the background of these podcasts, oftentimes I will uh, just be grinding away a little bit of MLB. You know, you like to have the conversation going, but something to do with your hands. Um, I just hit into a triple play because and I'll put this clip up on Twitter. I hit the ball back at the pitcher. It doinked off of his head. The second baseman caught it and they turned to triple play. I am so mad (laughs) right now. I'm actually fucking furious. It's in the middle of a goddamn showdown. Um, I want to scream. He got but I will not. God damn it. Shout out to Vegas and Dallas. Um, that next talking point on a run sheet, boys, let's save it for last. Mention the other two things really quickly, because I think in terms of hockey, it might be the one thing that we can discuss the most. Um, there was Matthew Kachuk on the pregame panel for the NBA on TNT before game six for the heat, uh, which is awesome, which is awesome. Um, You know, the NHL desperately needs this. You know, we we talked about this, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was here. Um, Just the idea of, yeah, because it was the podcast question. and Oh, who can you imagine having a podcast? And we talked about the, you know, super unlikely odds, like an active NHL player would ever have a podcast unlike what we see in the NBA, just because mm-hmm. of the way fucking hockey is. Um, the NHL needs to hope that this can be kind of a catapult for Matthew Kachuk to try and transcend these small little hockey bubble. Um, because it doesn't, you don't get too many chances at that in this league. Aside from Canadians knowing who Sidney Crosby is because he won him a gold medal and he's on their bread. I mean, what a well. Where's the lie about crossover I mean, and the lack of it? You know. Yeah. I mean, Connor McDavid and Patrick Kane were both on our no. Connor McDavid and Patrick T- uh, Jonathan Taze were both on toasters. It wasn't one of those toasters where you put it down and it imprints the logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, put, really. Put fucking Connor McToaster. And um, Jonathan <laughs> what, Did his face look more accurate on the toast than it did for the cover of NHL 19? <laughs> I mean, when he's like doing a, yeah. when he's pogging, uh, yeah. it did. It looked pretty. It looked pretty good. Pogger, 
<laughs> we might have an episode title there. What was so say? The list is growing. <laughs> it's growing so quickly. Oh, I think that God. was an emo that I gave you for a bit. Pogger McDavid, then, then Pogger McGregor. Yeah. Yeah. Pogger McGregor one's good. Uh, the other thing to talk about is uh, Philadelphia hockey, baby. Um, new GM, Danny Briere has uh, said that the Flyers are open open to trading goaltender Carter Hart. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> I have a mistake on my sheet because I fo- forgot to, to, to delete the last thing, um, which was the Andrew Shaw point from our last thing. So I'm, I'm just going to share this because it's fucking hilarious. Flyers. Flyers are open to trading goaltender Carter Hart, says general manager Dana Briere. And then the next point, I can't believe a guy who got suspended for calling a ref a homophobic slur would, would do such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Just reading that made me laugh. Holy oh, <sighs> shit. Oh, no, I forgot to delete that. <laughs> just sorry, Perfect. Danny. The new truth has been written. Mm. Um. <sighs> I don't know if Flyers fans are going to be confident about this at all. I mean, there's some conversation as to like, okay, just how good is Carter Hart? So on and so (laughs) forth. But I don't know the optics of it. You know, you trade a still relatively young goaltender and what? 24, 24, 25. Yeah. And it's like, what is, what are you going to get back? The idea of like how much value does he have? Because if you're open to trading him, that means you could be viewed as having a lack of confidence in him to be the guy. So then why would I, as the GM of the Minnesota wild, which they don't have a goalie issue, but why would I, as the GM of insert team here, be willing to give you a lot for the guy yeah. if you're willing to trade him? Yep. What, why would I do that then? That doesn't make any sense. So I, I don't know. I just, I, and and whether or not it's even true or not, and maybe he was misquoted, whatever, the problem is it's believable. And that's that's the worst thing, is if a statement like this is believable, then it almost doesn't matter if it's true mm-hmm. or not, because that's just how your front office is viewed. So... Uh, we we shall see. I think it could line up to be a rather interesting off season for the Flyers for a variety of different reasons. The only big thing to really talk about, though, in the world of hockey is the double IHF finals. Um, the tournament has wrapped up Canada winning gold. And, you know, I'll, I'll come back to this point. Canada wins gold over Germany who finished with the silver, again, beating the United States in the semifinals. And, of course, as I mentioned last episode, Germany is going to host next year's tournament. And Latvia beats the U.S. for the bronze in overtime. Now, for the Canadian side of things, you had Milan Lucic celebrating, which was cool. Love for Milan Lucic. You had Tyler Myers on Instagram putting out the, the quote of worst Canadian team ever. Because clearly the Canadians on the team are just like, fuck, fuck you. And they still mm-hmm. viewed it as like, hey, we are Canada. We are the favorites to win this. And they're correct to view it that way. As much as certain fans of the U.S. after finishing fourth might be trying to reset the optics of this as, oh, well, whatever. No one really cares about this tournament. The tournament does matter. Mm-hmm. And whether or not. The Canadian side, the U.S. side have their best teams possible. They are still going to be viewed as favorites every single time. And it's the same thing for other countries. You know, we talk about Finland, who have a population of less than six million. So you think about how many players hockey wise do they even have to draw from to try and put together a competitive team, even more so for Latvia who, according to World Bank 2021, have a population of under 1.9 million people. So think about just how few players are going to be eligible hockey-wise to hit the level, to do what they were able to do. And, you know, their goaltender, Arthur Siloffs, won tournament MVP. He played all 10 games, Canucks prospect. Um, They made today, the 29th of May, a fucking national holiday. (laughs) <laughs> and through this gigantic fucking party, I think in City Square for Re- in Riga, 
welcoming the team home. Um, this is a fucking massive, massive deal elsewhere. And again, we talked about it. Reasons why over here it's not often viewed as the most important tournament in the world, which isn't the right way to look at it. We talked about, okay, you don't always have the best players there. But again, no matter what, Canada, the U.S., like they are favorites to win. And sure, Canada wins gold, but when you have Germany and Latvia finishing with a medal, it really that shouldn't be happening. Especially Latvia over Canada, the U.S., even Sweden and Finland. Like this yeah. is a fucking monumental step forward for Latvian hockey and for Germany too. I mean, Jesus Christ, their best player. And Dreisaitl's not there. They still finish with the goddamn silver. Yeah. It's a big before deal, especially Leon, heading into hosting next year. I think we looked this up last time we were talking about international play. Like, before the emergence of Leon Dreisaitl, who probably now is the leading German scorer for the NHL. Like, other names up there, Marcel Gotch. Like, it, they're not g- great players from Germany. But this is going to help grow the game in Germany, too. Like, it's so going to be more. I have the list of top scorers, German top scorers in NHL history. It goes Reggie, Jay-Z, Tupac, and Biggie. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> please go. God damn it. Boo. <laughs> 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 so number 10 on the list um, with 104 points is a guy by the name of Brian Glynn. Uh, who played for Calgary, Minnesota. He played for a bunch of teams. Jesus Christ. Soda! Soda! Uh, Soda! Uh, number nine, Tobias Reeder with 145 points. Toby. Tim, Tim Stutzla as, uh, is already eighth with That's 177. Insane. So crazy. Marcel Gotch with 188 points. Dennis Seidenberg, 251. Fifth is Uwe Krupp with 281. Christian Erhoff, 339. Jochen Hesch, 463. Marco Sturm, 487. Leon Dreisaitl, 744. (laughs) (laughs) It's fucking insane. Oh my god, Dreisaitl's like, he already has over 700 and the man is like just entering his prime. That's ridiculous. Jesus. I didn't know as many points he fucking had. Jesus Christ. Mm Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's funny because scoring... I was looking up tournament scoring for this as well. Um, any guesses of who led this world championship in scoring? Rocco Grimaldi, AHL legend. Yep. Currently Rocco! unaffiliated with the NHL team. Rocco Grimaldi, 14 points in 10 games. I'm so happy for him. He's was such a nice Over a point dude. per game. Over a point per game in the AHL. He was destined for greatness. Mm. Man. If he did not have an offer coming through for him for an NHL team to stay within the Blackhawks organization and, you know, go back up there, I don't know, man. I don't know. You look at the rest of this German team, too. They were led by fucking, what, 20-year-old J.J. Peterka? Peterka of the Sabres, who was third in scoring in the tournament. Uh, 13th was defenseman Kai Weissman, Weissman, uh, who played for the Providence Bruins this year. Nico Sturm. I mean, and Marcel Nobles was 21st. Like, that's who was up there for the Germans. And for the Latvians, uh, Rehard Bukarts had 11 points in 10 games. He was formerly a former Portland Pirate, by the way, for one game. Um, But, yeah, he never made it to the NHL, AHL and ECHL over here. Um, You had Rudolf Balsers. And God, who who was next? Rodrigo Bowles, who was a a Panthers prospect, and Bruins and Sens legend Kaspar Daugavins. Like it's insane. Like for Germany and Latvia to have meddled when you still have top notch NHL players in this tournament. Maybe not the best of the best, but you can't pretend Miko Rantanen wasn't in the lineup for Finland or that. I mean, Nick Ehlers carrying Denmark, but I mean, you know, Denmark is kind of in that Latvia territory where you're just like, okay, how much depth is there? Um, this is just insane. And it was really, really cool to see the celebration footage and the pictures of it. Of So I forget which player it was, but he's on the plane as they're descending and filming what the crowd looks like below. And then someone put the follow-up of 
the crowd filming the plane and freaking the hell out that oh. is our team. <laughs> it's just it's fucking adorable, is what it is. It's so mm-hmm. wholesome. That's all. So, that's amazing. Yeah, I think my favorite thing about the whole tournament too was after Latvia beat Finland, they started playing cha 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 at the MC. <laughs> Fucking trolls. <laughs> Fucking trolls. <laughs> Not cool. Finland already fucking lost Eurovision when they shouldn't have. God damn it. Yeah. They're going to get mocked like that. Bullshit. Also, note uh, one another thing about Rocco Grimaldi. The only player on that roster, on the U.S. roster, who was not affiliated with an NHL team. I, I didn't he, actually didn't know he was the only player. Wow. Yeah, he was the only player. Get that Every other contract. person there has it has ties to it, uh, to an NHL team. He needs a contract. He know. is one of the nicest individuals. Um, He's bound shortening. to get one, right? I, I had a, I actually had a conversation, a few conversations with him on Twitter, and actually started with uh, he came out with a quote. Well, he was misquoted, and I I just mentioned I didn't even at him or anything. I was just like Rocco Grimaldi, like this guy's just up from the HL. Why is he talking trash to my team? Fucking what a loser! Like basically, I you know I can't remember what exactly I said, and then. Apparently, he has the thing that, you know, if his name gets said, it'll like ping him or something like that. He comes back to talk. He's like, hey, I actually didn't say it like this. And I have all, all kinds of respects for this and this and that. I just continue. I'm like, oh, OK. And then I continued a conversation with him. He is by far one of the nicest guys. I felt horrible. He made me look like a goddamn fool for chirping him and coming back and like, yeah, it's a misquote. And I'm, then he's the nicest guy like on the planet. Like, Yeah. Put that was a learning place, experience. Rocco Grimaldi. That was a learning experience for younger sin, definitely. There you're you like, go. fuck, <laughs> am I the asshole? Oh shit. <laughs> right, man, are we the baddies? Oh god, am, am I the bad guy for chirping a hockey player? No. As long as it's Andrew Shaw, you're doing just fine. Fuck that guy. Two podcasts in a row. Fuck that guy. Gentlemen, do we have anything else to add or do we wrap up what has been one of the weirdest shows, but one of the shows I've had the most fun with? I Hey man, when when you're when you're riding high, sometimes it's best to just uh, you know go off into the sunset. All right, all right, all right. Hey, <laughs> That's Johnny what Utah? I like about Jesus. podcasts. <laughs> the more the more I get older, the more they stay the same. Hockey podcasts that aren't actually about hockey podcasts. It's delightful. Endo Mills, what do you got going on, handsome? I'm doing things. That's that's it. That's the tweet. Zen. What do you got going on? Uh, getting ready to head to Finland, doing some streaming on YouTube. Of course, the money puck challenge is uh, officially ongoing. Got a couple years done. So you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell. So, you know, when I'm going live or stuff or stuff or just, you know, whatever. But yeah, it's 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 a great fun challenge. Salary caps off. My team is only allowed to spend to the uh, current cap floor and, inc- and we increase by one million every year. It's an idea that much like people are like, hey, Tukey did this. Are you going to do this? I've already been asked <laughs> since doing this. Are you going to do this? Wait, like, really? Someone already yes. asked you that? Yes. Oh, I forgot to oh mention was that earlier. <laughs> I'm, I don't remember who it was, but it's one of those things where it's like, I'm not going to do it when he's already doing it. Go watch his. That's the point. <laughs> That's like uh, Kofi from Secret Base being like, hey, do you mind if I do the, the streamer? versus twitch chat thing and i'm like no especially on basketball i'm not going back to that anytime soon you go <laughs> right ahead it's like jesus it's not like i invented the concept of that maybe i did i don't know maybe i'm the best <laughs> and if you want to follow the best at tukey 24 everywhere youtube twitch instagram tiktok we're bringing back vine damn it we're gonna do that six seconds of greatness there's a sex life joke in there. And anyway, six, yeah, I was just going to say six seconds is all I need. <laughs> and uh, we'll see what the episode title is now. Uh, who's to say? We'll see you next week. No, we won't see you next week. I mean, Endo and I will. Sin won't be here. But you'll see Sin again on Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. Good night, everybody. <laughs>